Here's Victoria and Anthony with an AMI This Week Shortcut. Well, it's no secret that I love books. In fact, I wrote one. Beyond Vision, the story of a blind rower by Victoria Nolan. Available everywhere. Thanks for the plug, Anthony. <laughs> but the reason I brought it up is our audience needs to know about a new book called The Blind Mechanic. That's right. The Blind Mechanic by Marilyn Davidson Elliott tells the true story of Marilyn's late father, Eric Davidson, one of the most famous survivors of the 1917 Halifax explosion. Eric was an admired figure in Halifax for years and the subject of a National Film Board documentary. Now Marilyn tells the fascinating personal story of his life. Halifax's Laura Bain attended the book launch of The Blind Mechanic at the Maritime Museum of the Atlantic. Here's her story. Author Marilyn Davidson Elliott can hardly sign books fast enough to keep up with a long line of people eager to buy her book, The Blind Mechanic. My father was uh, a phenomenon. He did incredible things all throughout my life. People were amazed at this man and what he could do. So I, I just always knew that it was a story that should be told to a wider audience. Eric Davidson was two and a half years old on December 6, 1917, the day of the Halifax explosion. The blast flattened a huge portion of the city, caused thousands of deaths and a significant number of eye injuries. Reading from her book at the book launch, Marilyn recounts the effects the devastating day had on her father. That very day, Dr. Dell surgically removed both of Eric's eyes. At two and a half years of age, Eric Davidson was the youngest survivor of the Halifax explosion to have both eyes surgically removed. The Blind Mechanic chronicles Eric's life, including his early years in a loving home with his parents and four siblings. He never spoke of being disadvantaged or he was never angry or, or felt that he missed out on anything, quite the opposite. He was very positive, very forward thinking and uh, grateful for uh, the things that he could enjoy. He was educated at the Halifax School for the Blind, where his independent streak thrived. And when he graduated, he wanted to become an automobile mechanic. He always had a fascination with automobiles as a young child growing up. But the trade school Eric approached refused to train him. He was told at the time that he should perhaps think about fixing washing machines and that no one would hire a blind mechanic. And I think by being told that, no one would hire a blind mechanic, that that gave him the drive to prove them wrong. He always thought on the positive side, not the negative. Well, let's see, there's got to be a way to get around this. So he bought some automobile uh, manuals, he had his family read them to him, and um, he worked on cars in the backyard, taking them apart. And, once they were working fine, then he would do something like disconnect a spark plug, per se, and listen to how that sounded. And pretty soon he was able to identify what was not working in an engine by just listening to it. Eric eventually broke through the barriers and became a licensed mechanic in 1948. That led to a long and successful career. Over the years, Eric attracted a lot of media attention when he was being interviewed or the notoriety was upon him, he was uncomfortable with it. Uh, he just wanted to live a normal life and he didn't really understand what all the fuss was about. In 1950, Eric married Mary Zink, who was partially sighted, and they had three children. I think we had the best of both worlds. We were exposed to the world of vision loss and um, you know, we, plus we all, my brothers and I have had perfect vision. So, um, yeah, we had the best of both worlds. It was wonderful life. Elaine McCluskey, the book's editor at Nimbus Publishing, says everyone should read The Blind Mechanic and tells us why she enjoyed it. It adds new knowledge to the Halifax explosion, but the, it was the human element, um, this man's amazing story that was just so inspiring and the whole family that it, it was his family originally who supported him. He raised his own family in a wonderful way. So those three things just made it a, an amazing book. Eric died in 2009 at the age of 94. Everyone always says that 
they came away from being with my father feeling better about themselves and about life in general and uh, that was just his positivity so I felt the book could do no harm it could only do good and we need a lot of positivity in our world these days so I thought that would be a good thing.